Joy Joy is the second fruit of the Holy Ghost. True Christian joy, my child, is not like the joy the world offers, which consists only in the enjoyment of a momentary pleasure which always produces remorse, but in the joy that is to be found only in the love and service of God, a joy surpassing all understanding, and a joy in death, which is the recompense of a good life and which will bring you to the joys of heaven, joys no one can take from you. The Meeting on the Nile St. Macarius sometimes left his cell to visit solitaries who dwelt in other parts of the desert of Egypt, that from their example he might learn how to serve God with more perfection. Whatever he saw most perfect in any of these, he himself always tried to imitate. On one of these occasions he went to visit another anchorite who bore the same name as he did. It happened that they were crossing the Nile together in a boat, in which there were also true tribunes or noble officers of the imperial army. These were arrayed in magnificent garments, and were accompanied by a numerous train of attendants, also attired with great splendor. The tribunes saw the two solitaries sitting at the farther end of the boat, clad in the poorest clothing, but their countenances wearing an expression of perfect happiness. This astonished them. They could not understand how so much happiness could be found in the midst of such poverty. So one of the officers, going over to where they sat, said to them, You appear to be very happy, although you seem to be poor. They answered him, You are right, for we are very happy. Indeed, our name signifies happiness. But if we are so happy in having forsaken the world with all its goods, how miserable must be those who have lived attached to it. These words, spoken in a tone of earnestness, made so great an impression on the officer that, as soon as he went home, he took off all his splendid garments, gave great alms to the poor, and, leaving the world, went to spend the rest of his days in solitude, that he too might be happy, not only here, but also in eternity. St. Genevieve in the Fields St. Genevieve belonged to a noble family in France and was born about the middle of the 5th century. In those days, it was not thought to be degrading in high families to tend the cattle in the fields. Nothing pleased the little Genevieve so much as when she was told to take her shepherd's crook in her hand and go tend the sheep. It was during these days that she was happiest, for she had no one to disturb her, and she was able to speak all day to her heavenly Father, and to think on heavenly things. If she saw a wolf coming near the sheep, she thought of Satan, who goes about seeking to devour souls. When she heard her sheepdog bark, it put in her mind that she should always be on the watch, lest the enemy might come, and the sheep and the lambs themselves so gentle and so tame, taught her that like her spouse, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, she should be humble and meek. Thus did the holy child Genevieve live for God alone in perfect happiness and joy. Blessed Angela's Joy at Death As the feast of our divine Lord's nativity drew near, blessed Angela, who was dying, said to those who were around her, The Son of God has been pleased to present me to his eternal Father, and I heard from his divine lips these words, My well-beloved spouse, I do not wish that you should come to me in sorrow, but in joy, as it behooves a queen to be received into her kingdom. Come, then, my dearest friend, my beloved spouse, come, for all the saints in heaven await you with great joy. I will not send an angel or a saint to bring you to heaven, I myself will meet you and bring you thither, for you have been most dear and agreeable to my majesty. During the day preceding her death, she was often heard to say, Eternal Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Those who were kneeling around her bed said, while the tears ran down their cheeks, Alas, it is now but too true, you are going to leave us, you are going to forsake us. She replied, Yes, my dearest friend, I must tell you plainly, it is now time for me to go. Her pains had now entirely left her, and she lay calmly awaiting the hour of her departure, 
and a heavenly smile lighted up her countenance as if she had already saw the inheritance promised to the just forever. Towards the evening, on the fourth day of January, sweetly smiling, she calmly passed away, and her holy soul went to heaven in the company of her beloved Jesus, whom she had so tenderly loved. This was in the year 309. Her body rests in the church of the Friar Miners of Fuligino, where many miracles made her dear to the people. It is in this way, my child, that those who serve God live and die, May this fruit of joy be in your soul also during your whole lifetime and at the moment of your death. Amen.